the Muscular Dystrophy Association has sort of reached out to a number of these centers and provided some guidance on, you know, sort of how to approach this and, you know, what sort of information to be communicating to patients and their families. So what, what were, and I know obviously you ran, you helped run a, a Q&A on that exact topic. So I, I'm curious, sort of what, what are some of those best practices and precautions that the MBA has sort of recommended for patients and providers right now? Yeah, and I think one of the more challenging aspects is we are now learning that it's really not only ill contacts that we advised against people interacting with, but it's possible, um, particularly in the younger population, to have asymptomatic be asymptomatic carriers for up to two days. So really the same precautions that are uh, recommended for everyone are, are especially important for the neuromuscular community where caregivers and the patients themselves have to um, really practice very thorough hand washing practices. Now there's a, about to be a federal recommendation that uh, everyone out in public uh, wear uh, some protective mask that doesn't prevent them from getting an exposure, but it lessens the likelihood of aerosolized droplets that can influence others. Or I think one of the particularly challenging things has been that um, when there are infected fluids, like from sneezing, it winds up in somebody's hand, and then that hand touches a doorknob, and that doorknob is then uh, the fomite or the source of transmission uh, to another person who never even sees the first individual. So that's where um, hand washing and practicing, uh, you know, the, the necessary cleanliness, even for packages coming into the home, unfortunately, we're now in a place where even some of the delivery services have recognized that their facilities might have had exposures. And so we, we see increasingly people decontaminating particularly non-porous surfaces. So things that uh, cardboard is relatively safe, but other surfaces that uh, don't, um, where, the, where the particles may be preserved for up to two days have to be cleaned. We did, we did develop a resource page and send out a, a written um, document to all the care center directors and to the patient community with a number of links that relied on some CDC guidance information and other useful tips. A lot of, there are some aspects which are um, important to emphasize for the neuromuscular community, and that it's not only uh, respiratory people in the later stages of the disease can have um, transmission through stool, so that's important that that um, be carefully observed as well, appropriate uh, hand watching and disposal of those materials. And so uh, we, we sent this out to everyone, and, but it's in real time, our learning more every day and that information is being aggregated in the COVID-19 resource page uh, that the MDA has initiated. Has, has that been a difficult aspect of this to sort of, you know, obviously we're, like you mentioned, we're sort of learning new information week by week, you know, every Monday morning the CDC and the NIH are releasing new numbers and, you know, updating guidances and stuff. Has, has it been difficult to sort of you know, adjust on the fly to those sort of things? Uh, no, but I mean, it's not difficult. It's just difficult for people to, for the public to keep abreast because there's obviously various sources of information, some more credible than others. And uh, obviously it's challenging to weigh the, uh, all those, all that information and make a decision about what practice any one individual is gonna follow. That's why we're trying to aggregate that in a way in which it's been vetted and makes sense so that there are not a bunch of disparate opinions about what uh, is real or not.